Alright, here's an updated version of the tutorial for my random ID script. Start by going to the editor. Pick which map you want. I'll do Altus this time. Go ahead and save it. Call this one ID tutorial. Go to your where you save the file in your Windows Explorer. You just have a mission SQM at first. Copy the EPD folder out of the download. If you don't have it in init.sqf, you can use mine. It just has this one line, so if you already have one, copy paste that in. And then copy the description of EXT. If you already have one, if you already have one, all you need is these three lines right here. If you don't, you can just delete these up ones and create your own mission. This is just for the sample I gave you. Next thing we're going to do is go into the EPD folder, open up IED settings. Go ahead and explain what all these mean. So the EPD IED debug shows where all the IEDs are, where all the fake ones are, if you're close to one the speed you're going and whatnot. Make sure you set this to false before you release the mission. The hide IED section markers, if you use the marker method to create them, which I'll explain in a little bit, this will hide that marker by setting the alpha to zero. If you want to hide safe zones, the same method sets the alpha to zero. Items required to disarm. By default, you have to have a toolkit if you have a disarm option. You can have multiple things like a mine detector and a toolkit or, or any other item you want. If you make it blank, you don't need anything to get the disarm option. Better disarmers are people who are better at disarming. They have an increased chance of disarming. So right now the blue explosive specialists and a couple others. The base disarm chance is 75%. So this regular soldier will have 75% chance of disarming successfully. This bonus chance is added on to the base chance if you're in the better disarmer category. So blue four explosive specialists will have a 95% chance, which is 75 plus 20. The secondary chance is how often the secondary ID will be will be created after a primary ID goes off. The small chance is how often a small ID will be chosen when they're being created. Medium chance is 40%. Medium ID chance. And then the large chance would be how often a large one, so 20% of the time. These are global settings. You can also change it section by section, which I'll show you when we get to there. The IED secondary items are the items the secondaries are hide in. These are pretty small, like a camera, plastic bottle, tactical bacon. The small items are a little bit bigger, like road cones, pallets, buckets. The medium IEDs are a little bit bigger, portable generators, metal barrels, logs. The large IEDs are pretty big, a stack of bricks, an off-road vehicle, washing machine. The predefined locations are useful for making sections on the map without using a marker. So since we're trying to brand new map, I'll delete these. So you want to leave this line alone. The allow explosive trigger IDs was added a few versions ago. It allows you to shoot an IDs explosive or a grenade or rockets or any of that and then blow them up. Set that the false to turn that off. This comment out section here shows you all different ways to create IDs and I'll go through each one in a little bit. So this is the sample ID mission that comes with it, so I'll go ahead and clear that out. And also go ahead and clear out the safe zones. So this ID initial array are the IDs that get created when the mission starts. You can also create them on the fly, which I'll explain later on. ID safe zones are where no IEDs can be created unless you use these three creation methods, but I'll cover that in a little bit. So now we've cleared that out, go ahead and save it. Go back to Iron Man. We need to restart the editor because we changed the description at EXE. 
So go back to the editor, pick the same map, open your mission. We'll go ahead and spawn somewhere, do the runway, make a player, and I'll be explosive specialist, so I have the toolkit. And click preview. So you see in the bottom corner, sync and IDs, that means the script was started. Another way you can check is to go to the debug console, type IED dictionary. If you see a bunch of brackets, that means it's working. Since they're empty, there's no IEDs on the map. And you can confirm visually there's no IEDs. So now to add IEDs, we'll go back to the notepad. We'll go ahead and do these in order. So the first one, all, creates all cities, all villages, and all locals. And we'll give it a side of west. So anybody on the west team can be blown up. So I'll go back to Arma. Restart the mission. So now it says sneak in IEDs. If you go check the ID dictionary, there's a bunch of gibberish. That means it's working. You can check the map and see there's IEDs all over the place. So Peter Ghost has four real ones and four fake ones. There's some over here by where we're at. We'll go ahead and teleport to one. So the chuck's the real IED and the bucket's the fake one. And then if we get too close, it'll pull up. The all marker creates a ton of them. I would not recommend using it. And the next one, the all cities. So instead of saying all, say all cities. This will remove the locals and the villages. So you check the map and see only the big cities are there. So Kavala has some. Agios Dionysus has some. Maybe we want all the villages as well. So we'll make another entry, which put a comma between them all. Say all villages. And again, we'll have West set them all. So this, is a, this will be a combination between all cities and all villages. Go ahead and restart so we can see our changes. So this is pretty good coverage. However, you notice things like the main roads and stuff don't have any IEDs, so that's kind of Depends what your mission wants to be, if you want IDs in town or elsewhere. So let's go to the next one, which is all locals. I'll go ahead and delete one of these and change this to locals. Alright, Altus does not have any locals anymore. These used to be like landmarks, like the Coliseum and stuff. So I can't really demonstrate anything because there's no longer defined. It's just there for legacy reasons. The next one is to use a map location. So if you know a name of one of the towns, like Gravia. I'm going to do West again. So go ahead and restart it. See the town of Gravia now has some IEDs. It'll pull in the, it'll look in the config for the size of the town and pick out a mount based off of that. So it looks like five are created. So that cone is one of them. And in the top right, you can see the debug information. There's another one over there. And that is a fake that little barrel. So I'll go to the next option, which is the amount to place. 
So you can type a number in here. Maybe we want 20 IDs. We're feeling crazy. Go ahead, restart. Now there's 15 real ones and 15 fake ones. It's kind of crowded. I would not recommend actually doing this many in a mission, but it's up to you. Go ahead and move our player over there. So the next option is the IDs the place and that fakes the place. So maybe we want two real ones and then just lots of debris, so 20 fake ones. Go ahead and save it. Preview the mission. So now there's a real one right there, a real one right there. That tire's a fake ID. Won't blow up. Go look at the real one real fast. So that stump is a fake one. And we're close enough to get disarm option. Now it's disarmed. That's a fake one. I don't see any others. The final option for using map locations is to put an array. So say we want 20 items. And then we want a 50% chance that they'll be fake. And if it's not fake, they'll have a 70% chance of being a small one. 20% chance of being a medium one, 10% chance of being a big one. So I'll go ahead and restart that. So about half of them are real ones. You'll see they're all small. That 70% chance is pretty good for them. Let me start it and you'll see it's different. So now there's one medium this time, and the spread's different. Oh, there's a large one over here too. So this pal's large one, that's a small one. Alright, so the next option is predefined location. So before we can use this, we need to use the predefined locations array. Before we can do that, we need to get a position. So we'll go ahead and find somewhere on the map. We want to put IEDs. Try this little bend right here. So to get the position, you can type git pose player. Let's copy paste that out of there. So we'll call this position one. And we'll need that array. This last number can be zero. And we need a size, so we'll say 2000. This will be the radius. So it's a 4000 meter circle. I wouldn't go too big with this because it can take a long time to find all the roads within a giant circle. Like, don't do the whole map unless you want to wait a couple minutes. So now I do the predefined location. We need to say the size, position 1. And then the side, which is west. Save it and restart. So it'll take the size of the circle we just made and pick a number off of that. Then it place IDs, reels and fake. And I have a typo, I guess. Forgot the second bracket. So make sure you have the beginning and ending brackets. So I restarted again. So you can see in this 4,000 meter circle, there's some real and some fake ones. So there's a pile of flower sack, pile of flowers. 
and another one somewhere so the next option is the amount of place so maybe we want a hundred there feeling adventures go ahead and restart so now it's pretty dense so this would not be fun to drive on <laughs> go over there and look so there's one there's one that wheelbarrow over there is one it could be fakes too but it was put these items are placed by the script so next one is the ID is the place and the fakes the place so maybe we want one ID and it's just a ton of trash go ahead and restart so you can see there's a ton of fake ones and then just one real one so if we're on this road right here might be stopping and checking a lot of items there's another one So again, you can do the array. So maybe we want a hundred items, and then we want a thirty percent chance they're fake. And if they're real, we'll give them a ten percent chance of being real or small. Thirty percent chance to be a medium sized, and a seventy percent chance to be a large. We want to cause lots of mayhem. So again, these settings are different than the ones here. If you don't pick like this, it'll just use the default ones at the top. So go ahead, go ahead and save that and restart. So now there's lots of large IEDs and a few mediums here and there and a couple smalls. And then 30% chance, 30 percent of them are fake ones. Go check what this looks like. So that's a fake one, that truck is real. That pile right there is real. So the, the remainder of these use markers. So we need to make some markers on the map. So I'll pick another location. Press F6 to go to markers. And then we'll create a marker on the map. Go ahead and go to ellipse and give it a size, maybe 400. Right now it works with circles. Eventually I'll make it to work with ellipse. Give it a name. So I'll just call it ID marker. Copy it so I'll type it later. So in this circle, I'll we'll move it to a better spot. I'll do it right there. The any ID can spawn inside of here if you call this section. So we need to say ID marker. And the first one is amount to place. So we'll do 30. And we want 70% of them to be fake ones. And then if it's a real one, we'll have 100 for small and 0 and 0, medium and large. I'm going to give it a side of west. Oops, don't put a semicolon in there. So if we start the mission, see most of them are fake, and then the ones that are real are all smalls. So that's a real one over there. That's a fake one. And then those are already there. That's not part of my script. Uh, the next one is ID is a place and fakes a place, so maybe we want 30 IDs and 5 fake items. Again, I would recommend not having too many IDs in one section, it becomes not fun anymore. And you're just constantly blowing up. But one every so often and it's more fun. So again, most of them are real. And then it's just based on the global setting, so there's a 40% chance for medium. 40% chance for small and then 20% chance for large. Let's go see what that looks like. I don't know where the fake one is, probably the other side of the bricks. Yep. 
So the next one is just the amount of place, so there'll be the same amount of both, so we'll do five. So five fakes, five reels. Again, there's five of each. It's a pile of tires right there. And then finally, you don't have to give it a size, it'll just base off the 400 I gave it earlier. Now it's four of each. So the last category when the marker size is one. So this kind of removes the randomness from it. You know exactly where you want your IDs to be. So I'll go ahead and move back to the runway for this. So they want to spawn the grass right here. We'll make it ID small. Make sure the axes A and axes B are one. We'll go ahead and make another one. ID medium. And do another one for large. So we'll say ID small. So right now I'll just do the first one which is west. So it, it might not be small, it depends on the randomness. Oh yeah, I'll put a semicolon in there. So there should be a small AD somewhere in front of me here. So a little aerosol can there. Go ahead and move closer. So you can also give it a chance to be real. So say there's a fifty percent chance that it's a fake one, fifty percent chance it's real. Go ahead and restart that. So there is an item there, and this time it's real. So I'll restart. This time it's fake, so is that a bucket? Yeah. So it's a fake ID now. So I made it a small and a medium one and a large one. Let's go ahead and give them a chance to actually force them to be that. So we can use this array right here. So let's say 0% chance to be fake, 100% chance to be small, 0 for the other two. And go ahead and do it again for the other one. So ID medium. Zero to be fake, zero to be small, 100% chance it's medium, 0% chance for large, make it west again. Then we'll do the last one, which is IED large, zero for fake, zero for small, zero for medium, 100 for large, make it west again, save that and restart. So that's a small one, medium, large. You can confirm that on the map. If you want to restart, get different items. So small, medium, large. Alright, so now let's say we want to spawn IDs on the fly. Looks like I lost my player there. So we'll go ahead and go back to your, wherever you're editing your file. So I'm using the init right now. You'll want to put this in your actual mission code. So after starting the mission, we'll wait 20 seconds. And we'll spawn them somewhere. So I'll just go ahead and say... And you can use any of the previous things I just talked about, so we'll do Gravia, and we'll spawn, 
five real ones and twenty fake items. The West will set it off. And you want to call create ID section. I'll go ahead and make this fifteen. It's not the wait as long. So start the mission. Make sure you save that. We'll wait fifteen seconds. So they just showed up. So there's five real ones and fifteen fake. Now let's say the objective's over, you want to clear everything out. So I'll go ahead and make that five. So the, your soldiers completed the mission, you're ready to go on to the next. You want to clear out the old so you can keep the server clean, I guess. You'll need to store the name that this gives you. So give you a section name. Let's call it section name since that's what it stands for. So I'll wait 15 seconds and then I'll clear it up. So to do that, you can say, sorry, say your section name. And then you call remove ID section. This value is going to be different every time you call this function, so don't rely on a hard coded value because it won't be the same next time you try to call it. So go ahead and restart the mission. Go to the map, look at Gravia. So the ID has been created. If we wait 15 seconds, it'll be deleted. And now it's cleaned up. If you look in the array, there's still the three we created earlier from the marker section. I'll go ahead and remove those. And then just to demonstrate that's different every time, give it a chance to create them. So right now it's called JKQSRCOVNY. If we restart. Wait for it to make him again. Now it's called E E Y I D D A M N next. So that's why I can't rely on it. However, you are allowed to type a section name in here. So maybe I want to call this Gravia, so it's actually useful to me later on. This the value of this will be Gravia. Now so we can actually say gravia or you can store it as a variable if you want to keep on hold of it too so if we restart it's nice to see its name is gravia you have to be careful you don't have collisions so if you name something else gravia without cleaning this one up I can't guarantee the what will happen with the script. <laughs> Some other things you might want to do is check the status of them. So if you say the section name, which I know is Gravia because I see it down below. Call git id section information. So we can just put that in a debug here. It returns a zero and a zero. So this stands for the number of exploded, which is the first number, and the number disarmed. So if I make myself invincible real fast, I'll go blow one up. So I'll we'll blow up the small one over here. That blew out in there in the grass. 
So now this number's changed to 1. And if I disarm one real fast before it disappears... Nope, disappeared. The second number would have been 1. And you see the... It just leave that section so it's no longer there. The final thing I'm going to cover is safe zones. So IEDs will not spawn here. So for this I'm going to use a marker. We'll just call it safe. Whatever you want to call it. Give it a size. So this will... No IEDs can spawn here. So since we're already spawning some in Gravia, we'll cover up half the town. So this southern section should be safe. So I called it safe, so we're going to copy this name. Go down to the safe zones. And then as before, it's going to create some in Gravia. And since that one setting is true, the hide safe zones. This is not going to be shown on the map. So I'll wait to five seconds for the and it to stop sleeping and create and grab you. You see this little section right here was safe. So I hope this has been informative. If you have questions, ask on the forums. I don't have a Google Plus account for my YouTube, so I can't answer comments on there, so make sure you ask on the forums, which will be in the link in the description.